Welcome back once again. We are working on a love boat. We um, have got some stuff here to uh, start making a little headway with it. And again, we're just gonna kind of be pot shotting around on stuff. I mean, we have got, man, a lot of work to do. And Dino Day, whew, it's getting here pretty quick. So um, it seems that we have kind of got a little pro stocker squared away a little bit. Still got a little tiny bit of work to do that car. We need to pull the oil pressure gauge out of it too because we're gonna use it in here. Um, but we can now, once again, shift our focus back to getting this ready to go. Um, and I've got a little bit of time to work on it today. I may get to work on it a little bit tomorrow. I'll get to work on it some Wednesday and then hope, I think like Thursday, I'll be able to uh, put a bunch of time into it. I'd really like to get all the wiring stuff done Thursday. I'd like to have all of that done. And then that will would realistically just leave the back, ouch. We'll just leave the uh, brakes, the brake situation uh, as the main hurdle. And then the rest of it will be all the nitpicky stuff that goes with whenever you're starting any car up for the first time or trying to get it all figured out, and what's gonna fall off of it and stuff like that. We're also beginning to investigate some stuff for our rear suspension and kind of try and figure that out. And we may have, you know, try and do some kind of a short-term solution till we get to a, you know, a long-term solution. Um, so the main goal at the moment is to have it ready to go to the dyno, not specifically have it ready to race because the suspension part of it is something that you know i don't particularly have any desire to really take it to the track with the suspension the way it currently is that's probably not going to work for me that's you know so i need to address that a little bit um as best i can and i think we also need to take the uh we may have to do something with the track lock because there's one wheel in it a little bit but we'll try just a fluid change because I can't remember if I put synthetic in it and put uh, track lock stuff in it, which is a no-no, you're not supposed to do that. Um, makes it too slippery. Um, so I just need to drain all of it out and just put some regular fluid in it, not synthetic, just regular fluid because it's already soaked into the clutches and stuff um, and see how that works. Uh, ultimately, we'll ha we'd have to do the track lock mod, but. I really need to order act on and on and on. This thing just it snowballs these kind of little deals. So anyway, let me uh, get a little bit of work done here and uh, that'll put us closer to having it running. And that is what everyone really wants to see. Is it running and then racing? So let me get it. Maybe this will work right here. I had a belt at home. All right, our belt's gonna be no bueno because like a moron, I forgot that I got a three rib. <laughs> Alternator pulley, and I got a four rib belt. It's too long. Technically, it's too long anyway, but it gets us a lot closer to where we thought we'd be. It's probably somewhere in a like a 35.5. Probably be probably be pretty good. This is a whoops. This is a 37. So I think a 35.5 will get us get us pretty close. But we need a three rib. So there we go. Look at how smart I am. <clears throat> but anyway, um, now I did bring my hole saw, so let me see if I can drill that hole real quick. All right, we have got our hole that we can just centrally run everything more or less back <laughs> into the into our wiring setup. So anyway, there we go. We are getting our fuel pump relay wired up, run up there. We've got some of our MSD box ran through the firewall. We've got our coil hooked up and the distributor is plugged in. So a little bit of progress, but we got stuff to do now. So we'll catch you guys in the next clip. See, hand puppet's been busy. Don't say he hasn't. We've got our power wire from our solenoid ran to our panel. And we've got our alternator wire ran, tied together. We'll 
kind of tidy this up a little bit, a little bit, maybe with some, uh, you know, some at least some zip ties. Um, we're going to pick up our belt uh, this afternoon, and tomorrow we're going to get after it pretty hard. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, we also got uh, something from a subscriber, from Jason. Um, I opened this already, and uh, I messed up the video, so I apologize. But it is a, a, uh, a recovery tank. Check that out. Um, Jason sent this to us. Thank you very much. Uh, it's very nice. We'll just tech screw it in. And uh, <laughs> there we go. Our catch cam problem is solved. Um, it's actually, you know, I think that'll work good. I mean, at least it'll be secure and I won't have a, you know, zip ties with a Mountain Dew bottle. Even though I'm, you know, I'm down with a Mountain Dew bottle, this will work fine too. It looks very official. Looks like we're trying to follow the rules, I guess. Um, we've also got to get uh, the steering. I don't know if I'll actually do the steering situation tomorrow. We, we need to get with uh, Yoda some and kind of really evaluate what we're going to do here with the brake system. Uh, we brought our Raybestos master cylinder in if we want to do that. Um, got a couple things to look at on that. Got our line lock solenoid. I went and tested it to make sure it works. I got that from Lance. Oh my gosh, I don't know how many years ago I bought that. But uh, it works, so uh, we're good with that. Just got to get it all hooked up. So anyway, we got plenty to do tomorrow. That's a fact. We got to get after it. Um, and I got side projects that I want to do to the car, but I really need to focus on getting it running. To be honest, to be honest, I don't want to get anybody get excited. We may try and just give it a test fire tomorrow, just for the heck of it. I got to bring some fuel and stuff, so maybe we'll give it a test fire. Okay, let's uh, let's head home and regroup, get some dinner, and we'll be out here tomorrow. I'm going to be out here tomorrow, yo. You be ready to do some real work. And don't just sit around staring at people. It's creepy. Welcome back. It's the next day, and we are ready to get hard at work on the love boat. Well, hold on. Now we're ready. We got our Pooh Bear shirt on. Pooh's ready to get his tummy dirty. Um... It's a late start today. Uh, we had some bad weather last night. It's kind of crappy looking outside. It's just a motivation killer. But we're here now. We've already eaten lunch, so we've got a little bit of time to work. And one of the things that we have is we picked up our, <laughs> our serpentine belt. So let's see if that's gonna be a that's gonna be a yay or a nay for us. I hope it is a yay. Belt is a no-go, it's too short, so you don't have a lot of options. I went through Advanced O'Reilly's and AutoZone, looking at different, trying to, you know, sometimes you can get them in partial lengths or whatever, so uh, we aired on the small size, and it's too short, so we'll probably try like a, um, like a 37 or something like that, and uh, see if we can find one, but uh, anyway. That is no bueno. I have to admit, Lincoln's shock mounting, not one of their better ideas. Um, once we've got this out, we might run us a drill bit <laughs> up through here and make us a pilot hole and get the whole saw out and uh, cut us a hole for reinstallment. Because um, that's not one of the better ideas. You might be asking, what in the world are you doing? Well, we'll show you in a few minutes. We're doing things that we shouldn't be doing because it has nothing to do with getting the car running. And But it does have to do with racing the car. And like Hand Puppet said, The Tri-5 got to go down, mugs. And hey, when Hand Puppet talks, I have to listen. It's just the way it works. Okay, what in the heck are we doing? Well, um, again, working on things that we should be working on and not working on things we should be working on. So, um, 
I've gotten mildly obsessed with uh, what are we going to do about our rear suspension. Um, for the front, I've already bought some 9010 shocks. I bought those a long time ago. Um, but I don't know what I'm going to do about the springs. I haven't even really looked at the springs. I don't know what will interchange, what will cross-reference, anything like that. I haven't, I haven't even looked at them. I've just, so far, I've looked at the back. I haven't looked at the front. I'll look at the front when we get the back gun. So what are we doing? Uh, this car had air ride in the back, like a lot of these cars, and someone converted it. Um, these are the shocks that were in the back. Um, hold on. Um, well, I thought I could play a tune with it, but maybe not. But yeah, that's a uh, you know drag shock. It does work. Look at that. Look at it. Look at that thing growing right before your very eyes, like a chia pet. Unity. Warning. It's gas pressurized strut, yo. Um, sounds awesome. I'm missing a piece of, oh, that's right. It, it goes in like that on the rear end. If you're looking front to back of the car, I forgot. It's got a weird bushing in there. Um, anyway, we got these off. These are our upper control arms and they're basically 12 inch eyelet to eyelet and they're standard two and a half in the back. I haven't measured the front, but I think it's probably pretty close as well. This is our spring that came off the back. It's pretty kind of bouncy. This is a Mustang spring. Um, and this is our lower control arm, which is at a, uh, which is a, um, it's 20, it's a 20 and a half eyelet to eyelet. So what in the heck does all of this mean? Well, that's, that's junk, that's junk. This is pretty much junk. That's pretty kind of junk. So I like stuff that has the word drag in front of it, like drag shock, drag spring, <laughs> not drag control arm, but we know what they're for. Um, I have already ordered a set of lower control arms, solid, adjustable, um, for a, a 78 through 8078 G body, you know, Monte Carlo, uh, stuff like that. Um, that will go to 20 and a half at its safest extension. So uh, that has our lower control arm taken care of. Also, the upper, which I want to get the tops off so I could kind of double check them. The uppers, some double adjustable uppers that I found. I mean, a lot of people make them, but I'm looking for stuff that's kind of reasonably priced and that will adjust the, the length that I want. Sometimes that's hard to find or, or even get them to contact you back about what their stuff's capable of. Um, the G-Body ones that I'm looking at at their safest extension are their double adjustable are 11 and a half. That puts us a half inch off from where we need to be just for this kind of, but we're also going to lower the rear end, which is going to help bring the body down, which is going to bring it technically kind of closer in a way. I mean, and we can adjust the lowers to pull the rear end in some. So we can, what we can do is we can make up the difference. Now, is that going to let our pinion angle be where we want it to be? We don't know, but you know, we're in uncharted territory. Nobody makes anything for these cars um, that's even remotely reasonably priced. So we're trying to, or technically at all, really, but whatever. Because um, nobody drag races them. That's, um, but, uh, so that's where we're at. We're, we've ordered lower control arms. I ordered this stuff from Summit. I could have maybe found something that would work, maybe a tiny bit cheaper. Um, uh, but, with Summit, if I don't like it, I can send it back and it's not a problem. It's not trying to send it back to a small company or a, a eBay seller or something like that where you're just going, jumping through hoops, trying to get your money back and it just, you know, it. so going through Summit is a lot easier. Um, and the uppers, I will, now that I've got the measurement on the uppers, 
I wanted to see them off the car, I'll probably order a set of uppers again. I've already ordered lowers. I will also, I've already also ordered some spherical ends. I think that they are going to work. I think the saddles are the same size. They look, I actually haven't measured it, but I figured, hey, if, I, if they don't fit on this car, then I'll use them on something else. I mean, let's be honest, I got Mustangs sitting around here. So it's not like they'll go to waste, but I've ordered them spherical uh, carrier um, bushings and I've ordered lower control arms. Now I'll order uppers. I really kind of wanted to put it together so I could figure out what shock length that I needed. Um, and that's where the Mustang spring comes in. I was looking at just like, hey, just put a Mustang spring in it. Um, and you can see how much it would already lower it, technically speaking. It'd be quite a bit. Um, so, I mean, that's, I mean, I, I mean, I think that's where we're probably gonna go right off the bat, is just put the Mustang springs in and see how it all settles out. Um, and then we can, then we can really look at the shock situation. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that's where we're at right now. Our belt didn't fit, that's disappointing. And uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I'm, uh, my motivation stinks today, man. It just sucks. So uh, I don't know. Maybe the, maybe I'll look at some wiring a little bit. I don't know. I'm just kind of screwing around. But anyway, we're but we're trying. We're trying to get things accomplished. Um, we're just creating more work though as well. So all right, cool. Let me work on. Let me actually try and do something here. We got the passenger lower out and we got the spring knocked out. Now we're gonna take the shock out and that'll just leave the one upper control arm. And we'll just we'll just leave that in there for right now while it's kind of giving the rear end something to hang on to besides the brake lines. <laughs> but uh, and I guess we'll just double check some of our measurements and order our stuff. I think, think we, can probably just order some like shocks for a Mustang. I um, think that would think that would probably work. So uh, we may just look into doing that. Look at us with a proper race car. Once again, I'd like to thank Jason for his generosity and sending us this. Shows us you guys are paying attention <laughs> during the video sometimes, but I certainly appreciate it. Um, there we go. Look, it's nearly as big as a radiator. So. <laughs> All right, now tomorrow we'll get our belt. ADHD kicked in again. I saw the muffler land on there and said, oh man, we gotta cut that and shorten it up a little bit. So, hey, I'm not gonna show you guys what's fixing to happen, but you know what's fixing to happen. <laughs> Let's do it. We got it cut. We just kind of got to figure out where it's, you know, tack it in and then clean all that up, put something that looks like a weld on it. And then at least the exhaust will be done. All right, we got this kind of tacked. It's not gonna look perfect, but in all honesty, it's a temporary measure until we uh, put the other motor in at some point. This, this is never meant to be, you know, the final product or the final product of the exhaust, at least. It's always was just meant to be temporary. Um, so I'll take that home and clean it up on the wire wheel and finish weld it and uh, we'll be ready to bolt it on. Uh, now I'm going to go home and order some parts I think. Um, I'll probably take some of this stuff home with me just so I'll have it there for reference. And uh, that's probably going to wrap it up. Um, I know these love up videos are getting... So uh, thanks for commenting, thanks for subscribing, thanks for the channel and all the ways that you guys do it's you guys are, you guys are too good to us honestly we don't deserve it um but we do appreciate it and thanks for watching and until next time on the substandard leader and fox body videos and lincoln videos on youtube hot rod lincoln's or drag race lincoln's or town cars i don't know we'll see you guys in the next vid and hopefully we'll get more done next time Thank you.